Hello and welcome to another how-to video. My name is Ditech, CTO of DVS, and if you haven't noticed, sadly, I've had to have a couple of weeks off work. Uh, I suffered quite a severe back injury, still suffering with it now. So if I start to waffle and not make sense, blame the NHS and all their lovely, wonderful chemicals that they give me. Thanks for all the love and the care that some of you guys have shown me. So today, to make it easy for myself and to break it back in, I'm gonna show you the new covert camera kit. So the part number is DS-2CD6425G0 forward slash F-21 and it's a 3.7 mil. So this new covert camera has two lenses in there and it has the capability to do facial capture to use with a facial recognition NVR, which I'm going to show you shortly. So lots and lots of potential for ATMs, uh, positioning above tills, public transport, etc. If we really want to, we can also get a customized firmware which allows the AMPR function um, with the covert camera if you're going to find a use for that. So maybe on a pillar, you can install the covert camera in a nice small space, put an external infrared on there and use it as an AMPR camera also. But today we're going to show you the facial recognition side of it because I think that's what it's designed for primarily. When you open the box, you get the drill template, we all throw that away. You get this nice mounting plate. So now with the previous covert cameras, you struggle to fit them. What you can do now is fit this, say to the wall, and the covert will module will actually bolt to that. I'll show you that in shortly, but it's the mounting plate for that. You actually get the covert box itself. So this is where the network sits. So you've got your DC 12 volts if you want to power it with a 12 volt adapter, your PoE LAN port, your micro SD card under the um, protected cover there. And on the front there, you've got your alarm input output and your connection one and connection two for your cameras. Now they're based on, let me just keep these safe, take the caps off. The modules are actually based on this SMA type connector. So you can feed the cable through, that screws onto there, one lot on there, there's a cable, but they're based as you can see there. It's like the SMA style with a thread on it. So you get in there the box, you get the two lens types and they're both exactly the same. Two lenses, earrings if you want, or earplugs, but they're not gonna work very well. You get the manual, but then that's what I'm for. So don't worry about the manual because I'm here for that. You get a pack of accessories, so within there you get mounting screws to mount the back plate. You get the covert kit. So the lens itself, there's a sticky pad on the back of the lens, which I've already put on. That sticky adhesive pad allows you to insert the camera module. It's a little bit tricky, but there you go, push it in. So there you go, pinhole camera inserted into the module. Now I could stick that to a wall with the cable going behind it. I'm just gonna have it coming out the bottom for the purposes of demonstration. And we're gonna stick it about there on the pod so we get a good view out. You get two SMA cables, so you can feed those through the holes and connect up the lens lenses, which I'll show you briefly. And you also get some self-adhesive tape to do the SMA joints to make them waterproof. And you also get this lovely fly lead connector. Now the fly lead connector goes into here like so, push and click. And it's your alarm inputs, outputs, as I said, they're all labeled on there. So it's very easy then to connect it up as necessary. So what we will do is get the other lens out, put this as a base. So first thing is first is get the screws out. So there's a couple of different ways you can fit the cameras. Like I say, the self-adhesive way this way, or you can be inventive. They come with brackets also. Um, it also comes with a different type of connector. So you can actually connect the module onto that bracket and you can have a tilt and turn bracket with a fixing on the back. So different types of connections for different applications. You choose what's best for you. So what we're gonna do is connect this to the back of this. It also acts as a heat sink. So if we quickly just get a drill driver, for those of you that don't know what a drill driver is, I started off by hand. I have one over here. So my lovely Panasonic drill driver. So we're just gonna tighten these up, make it nice and tight and do another one. We'll do all four. I do recommend you use this mounting plate also. There we go and put the 12 volt plug in there just so it's safe and we don't lose it. Even though we're not powering it with 12 volts, it's gonna be done by PoE. As you can see, I can actually screw that to the back plate then or into a vehicle, wherever I wanna fit that. What I'm gonna do now is get my fly lead, connect it to my SMA connector here. Ah, much, much better than the previous version of doing this. So camera input one on, the, on this unit is the face recognition camera. 
or the face capture. So we'll use that one as camera input one. We'll just tighten that up nicely there. And what we will do is hide the cable in there for now. We'll do a second one just to give it an overview. Plug that in there. I know this video is taking a lot longer than I thought, but these drugs are quite powerful. Um, although I'm not feeling much pain. But if anyone wants to operate on me for free, um, please feel free to contact me, ship me over to your country and give me a new back. I will be very, very appreciative. There's our unit there. We're going to put that on there. And the second module, what we will do is put another sticky pad on the back of this one. And we're just going to destroy my cabinet unit. Why not, eh? Why not, he says. Get this sticky. Oh, that's a pro another problem when you've got no nails. It's Trying to do it with no nails, take the peely stuff off. So the other one, for demonstration purposes, we're just going to fit, uh, I don't know, over there. So you've got an overview camera and the face rack camera there. We'll move this stuff out of the way. I'm going to power this up with PoE. So as soon as you get my PoE cable there, I'm going to power that up. You'll see straight away power lights come on. So that's going to do its thing there. I'm going to jump onto a laptop where you'll see me program it. So you shall see me in two seconds. Okay, thanks for joining us. I'm now sat down, uh, much to my back's pleasure. I've web browsed into both the facial recognition NVR and the facial recognition COVID camera. So first, COVID camera here, two cameras as you can see, press play. There is a delay in the uh, Internet Explorer and it's over the Wi-Fi, so just bear with me. But there you go, there's me, hello. So I'm doing the video. So we got the face watch camera, face recognition camera here and the overwatch one there. If I stop that and go into the configuration itself, many of you asked for the part number. I gave it to you at the beginning of the video, and there it's highlighted again. That is the latest firmware from today, but always check. If you get this product, always check and make sure you update to the latest firmware for reliability, bug fixes, and performance, as well as functions and features. Under VCA resource, we selected face capture. That's what we're going to concentrate on today. If I change it to smart event, it'll give you all of the other VCA options, but we are only interested in face recognition capture um, on this current video. All of the other features remain the same. So you've got under maintenance, security, user uh, management network, etc. We've got um, platform access, integration protocol, etc. etc. Each video a module is 1080p, but you can adjust that there. You can change it wherever it's H265 on or off. I've left it as default, just purposes of the video, but I can change that as required. Under image settings, we can adjust each image individually. So camera one, which is the facial recognition one, you can adjust all of the settings as needed there. So let's turn uh, WDR off, for instance. Now, depending on the installation, the installation type and environment, you may choose to leave that on. You can see it's quite dark in there, so I might change that to auto again and just turn that back on, and you'll see it get a little bit brighter, and the performance will probably be better. Change it on. So you adjust that as needed. You can see it's a lot whiter now. White balance, image enhancement, and video adjustment there. So you've got the different types of adjustments. Same with camera two. Go into there and adjust these as necessary. It'll take a little bit of time, but you can see under here, all of these ones are all off. So for WDR, again, I can turn that on to auto because the other one was already set on and make the image adjust itself as necessary. Very similar to what you've been doing already. Under the event, because we're only using it as a face rec camera, you only get basic events. Now I've already turned motion detection off by default. It's on, but I always turn it off and I have them on constant record. Of course, it's very preferential to what you're doing and how you're doing it, but I always turn motion off and have constant record on. That way you never miss a trick. With motion detection, sometimes you may miss something. With constant record, it's always there. So they're the different types of uh, functions we can set up currently. Under storage, you can put your SD card in there. I don't have an SD card in there currently. Um, but I've added it to a face rack NVR. Under face capture, you'll see the different options that are available now. You've set this up to be used with a facial recognition NVR. So we're going to display VCA, VCA info on stream, display target info. And you've got different options here depending on the installation type you're using. So I've set mine to full body shot because I can see the full body shot. If you've got any doubt, 
click on help it will redirect you to the manual you can go to face capture and under there you can actually select the different types um, of what each individual setting is and what they do and what that will affect the performance so always refer to that manual who knew that you actually had a manual built in but you can see there select the target picture size four types are available custom headshot half body and full body shot if you select the custom you can customize the width head and body height as required so what we will do is go back to the camera we're going to leave it as full body shot because you can see that you could have it as custom and adjust as necessary these you can leave pretty much as default but i input dvs hq covert demo camera and enable that to be saved on the stream click that as a save and the shield region now a shield region is a masked area that the detection is not um, viable in so i could draw an area around here which would mean any object in this area would not be detected for facial recognition so it's just a masking area under rule this is where we draw our detection rule so i've enabled it so i can clear the rule so there's two types you can so draw area or map minimum pupil distance the minimum pupil distance is set at 19 uh, pixels by default so you can leave it like that see what the performance is like and adjust as necessary you may want to get dvs or height vision depending on where you buy it from technical input on that but for the area so i can select draw area and i can select this wide area here and say anything within this box click save that box will change that is now my detection area click save again just to be sure and we've enabled it I'm in schedule 24 7 you can adjust as necessary and my alarm linkage is going to be notify surveillance center upload to ftp or memory card or nas if you're using any of those options and you can also trigger alarm output on the unit itself you saw me put the fly lead in if you wanted to trigger an output like it could be an external light buzzer sound anything door open on detection of face not a specific face but any face you can obviously do that as a linkage action under advanced configuration i would suggest leaving that as default if you need to adjust any of these please speak to um either dbs technical or you can speak to height vision technical or again if you click on the help go to face capture towards the bottom it does try to tell you there what those parameters mean and what it will do for the camera but mostly we can leave them as default um they're used to tweak performance if it's not working as well as it should but we will leave them as default for now so back to live view you can see with the rules if i press play for both the cameras i think i double tap that so it'll play and stop we'll soon see so you should see if i walk down you should see clearly my face it'll take a minute As I walk further down there, you can clearly see me. Hello. Again, so that was quite easy. What I'm going to do now is show you, I'm going to stop that, close that down. Now I'm in the facial recognition NVR. We do have a new um, hybrid facial recognition NVR, actually the X version, which is facial recognition um, with new uh, algorithms but it's also can be a false alarm reduction NVR. I'm going to show that in a separate video. For now, we're using the dedicated facial recognition NVR. Um, this is the, the first generation one. It's what I got in the demo room. It works really well. What you'll see I've done is under camera management, I've added the two cameras here. So camera four and five. So they're online. It's added them like a standard camera. And under VCA, Oh, sorry, absolutely li I'm lying, just ignore me. I've got three lists here, DVS Band and DVS HQ, which I've already uploaded my face in, and it's also added to Hike Central. So actually, if I click on DVS and then click Search, you'll see lots of different pictures in there that have been detected. But I've got, so I've got lots of different people added to the list. These are all people who work at DVS. Again, Band, click Search. Um, again, two rogues from our gallery. And again, click search. And this is the one from Hike Central. Uh, Jamie no longer works for us, sadly. 
um, but he's still very much within our memory. So what you'll see now is under the event, smart event, select the face rec camera. Sorry, face comparison, face rec camera. So I've enabled facial comparison there, enabled it. Um, you can put whatever messages you want. I'm not going to enable the output. It's 24 seven schedule. Linkage method su succeeded comparison. So I put notify surveillance center, but I can also put full screen monitoring. So the NVR will go full screen. In fact, let's do that just to show you on the camera, uh, outputs, etc. Linkage method failed comparison. So you've got uh, succeeded or failed and then what libraries this is going to be linked to. So this camera is linked to all of my libraries. So it's looking across all three libraries and it's looking for an 80 plus percent uh, match before it does anything. I can higher or lower that percentage as needed and as per my application. So I could say make it 40%. So anything over 40% match will trigger and um, give me an output or a, a linkage action. Or I could make it higher, make it 95% to make it more accurate for something like access control purposes. Stranger detection, already done a separate video on that, but it'll alarm you if somebody is present in the video that's not in one of the lists. And you can also adjust the face grading per camera as well. We're gonna leave it as default, but again, if you need to speak to DVS or Hype Vision about that, please do so. We're gonna go back to live view now on the NVR. It's much easier to show me working, to, for me to show you this working actually on the NVR itself. Okay, we're back on the camera now. I'm gonna turn the camera around so you can see the NVR in action. So bear with me, it's gonna pick me up when I do this but you will see exactly what I mean. If I position it so the camera will become into focus, it's already picked me up on full screen. On the left hand side here, you can see the comparison list. So if, you, if I just sort of get my finger right, left hand side there, and it also gives you a percentage. So if I zoom in, you can see the percentage there, 97% accuracy. So on the Left hand side here is the facial recognition camera. It's gone full screen because it's recognized me. There's all the matches on the left hand side. On the right hand side is the overview camera. This is detecting about four meters away. So there's the two covert cameras on the side. So you've got one by there and then one up there. Put it back to there. I'm gonna go and stand out of the way about four meters away and hide. So, let it go out of the way where it hasn't seen me. Let it drop off. Now I'm gonna walk in the scene and start walking towards the camera where you'll see the pickup. This is about four and a half to five meters away now from the camera, so the pickup is really good. So I'm gonna walk in the scene there. It's already picked me up, straight the way down, into here, in towards the camera, and you can see there, 97, 92, so it's a very, very high percentage. If I click one of these now, for this instance, click that, you can see that's my uh, database shot, that's my reference shot, and that's where I walked out there into the field of view. So you can actually see already, if I just move this out the way, because obviously it's me you want to focus on and not the actual uh, technology itself, of course it's me. That's why you watch the videos. Why else would you watch them? So that's the covert camera in use with the facial recognition NVR. If you want to know any more, please, please do contact us here at DVS and we'll be more than happy to help you. We've got the best sales team in the industry, best videos in the industry. Lots of people try to copy us. No one can equal or rival us. Anyway, I'll see you all soon. Keep liking, sharing. So like, Bing, 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 share, bing, 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 comment, do whatever you want, but make sure you watch this, subscribe, and we'll see you next week for another how-to video.